We're live on Spiritual Psychics TV with Paul Bannister and his guests for Spiritual Talk. Welcome everybody. It's good to be back. It's Thursday evening. It's eight o'clock and I'm so glad you're here to watch because tonight we have another fantastic guest. But guys, before we bring our fabulous guest on tonight, please don't forget to share the love, please. Please. Uh, I'm sure the gardening club won't mind if you share it into their group, um, but send, send it out there, send the love out. there will be great to get all the information that we share here tonight. And it's all for free. And at the end of the show, of course, we're going to do some messages. So stick around for that. But this is your chance guys to interview. So, oh, sorry, to ask your question for some of the, our top guests. There's not often that you have that opportunity to come on and, and, and have that uh, an experienced medium give you the the knowledge of their experience over the years so let us know where you're coming in from it's good to know that you're here that i'm not just sitting here talking to myself i do have our guest in the background oh here we go hi terry louise uh, good evening to you and she says hello to john and richard too and it's a shame we can't hear richard we, we one day we maybe maybe be able to get richard on who knows and Christine Davis. Hello, Christine. Good evening to you. And hello, Stephanie. Hello. Um, I've got my reading glasses on, but they're not great. They're a bit foggy tonight. It's been raining outside. And I have to run across the garden into my cabin to go live. So I got a bit steamy. So I do apologize. Hi, Jill. It's good to see you. It's good to see you here. Let us know where you're coming in from as well, guys. We'd like to know that we're international. Hi, Jackie. It's good to see you with the black cat there. Hi, Karen. Good to see you too. Just going to do a few more just to let everything settle down. Hi, Connie. Connie's coming in. It's good to see you, Connie. Now I know Connie's in Norfolk. Hi, Serena. Good to see you, Serena. And Laura. And Laura's coming in from BC, Canada. Great stuff. That's to the other side of the world as far as I'm concerned. And also, Renella, hi, how are you doing? She's from uh, from London, but originally South Africa. Awesome, awesome. And Bernie, she's coming in from, wow, that's a big, that's a great shout, Auckland, New Zealand. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you for supporting us. And also, um, Catherine from Missouri, that's brilliant. We truly are international tonight. But hi, guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Tonight, we, we're just going to get our guest in because I can't wait to get this guest in. I've been, I've been um, really interested in our guest tonight because, well, actually, I'm just going to stop waffling and I'm going to get John in. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's guest is... Oh, Richard just gave me a countdown. We've got international medium, tutor and accredited tutor at the Alpha Finley College, John Johnson. Welcome, John, to Spiritual Thank Talk. Thank you. Good evening, Paul. Nice to be here. It's good. It's good to see you. And thank you for joining us. But you're not actually, I know you're from Scotland, but you're actually yep. in Sweden. I am. I'm in the so, south of Sweden. Yep. So, so yeah. awesome. Awesome. So thank you for joining us tonight. Now, one of the things that you talk about is you call yourself the natural medium. Yep. Can you explain a little bit about that, please? Yeah. Well, the, I think for me, the, the, one of the important things to recognize about mediumship is that it is, it is meant to be a natural experience. So when we start to really consider, you know, that it's something we're all born with, it's something that's already there. There's, a, there's, a, there's an essence of our, um, our sensitivity within us when we're born into the world, because yeah. if you think about, you know, everybody's sensitive, the, the problem is, are we giving ourselves the permission to trust our sensitivity or are we ignoring it? You know, that's that for me is the, the, the kind of big two points. Um, if you think about the process of what it is, how it works or how we think it works, because nobody ultimately has the answer, but how we feel it works and how we recognize it within our experience, there's something very, very simple and very natural about it. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always easy to do it. It doesn't mean that it will always work because, you know, we're human. Yeah. But I do believe the um, the most natural thing about us is to recognize this, this natural power that we already have. And for me, I always very often refer it to nature, you know, because if you think about 
how many natural things we have in the world. If you think about how the way plants grow, trees grow, the sea moves, everything's in unison, everything has a natural movement of power and energy. And we are also part of that expression of nature, in a sense, yeah. you know. So if we're an expression of that nature, and nature in its essence is simple, and nature has its process of its natural essence of its own own self, then why would it not be natural for us to have the natural expression of ourselves as well? Yeah. So yeah. it's really about trying to understand. Um, I mean, the, the thing about obviously this world of uh, of mediumship and training and education is it becomes very complicated and very confusing. Yeah. And we get so many different concepts and ideas, which is good because it makes us think. Um, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to our nature and what we have and what we can offer. It's not it's not ever going to be a, a replica of something else, just like every flower in the garden is not the same as every other flower. You know, yeah. we are all an individual and within our own individuality, we also have our own naturalness. Now, the, the, for me, the key of the natural medium is to try to help and support students or even working mediums to try and encourage them to embrace that natural expression that's there rather than the educated expression. Because oh. the educated expression always gets in the way of the natural expression. That's interesting. Are we talking about programming? Yeah, well, ultimately programming, um, all within the best intentions, of course. Okay. We have, um, you know, we, we, we have systems of, you know, get this, do that. When you get that, do this with it. Um, this is what you're looking for. And the problem is that we've created a culture of insecurities very often in leadership. Because yeah. it's like, if you don't hit that mark, you are not good enough. Yeah. And the problem for me with that is that there isn't a mark, you know, because who decided that the mark was that, that if you don't do A, B and C, that means you're not doing. And we've got to respect the red line where, yes, there is a there is something we need to create. There is a point to what we do. And of course, if it's um, working with the spirit world, that is the evidential experience, which we're all trying to create. But I don't believe there is one um one system or one teaching that will get us all to the same destination yeah so it really starts to unlock what does your expression of your own mediumship do what does the expression of your experience of your spirit world do and what would be the most natural expression of yourself so it, it challenges everything to throw it back in yourself I'd like to come back to this, especially about managing your sensitivity. And it's very competitive and, and cutthroat, cutthroat industry in some respects. Like you said, performance is everything. Yeah. Um, but I want to come back to your own uh, journey into mediumship. And you've got a very interesting story. Would you mind sharing that with us in terms of how you how you suddenly become aware? Um, well, I suppose in many ways. The, the 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 journey as a child where my mum used to come to the room and say who are you talking to and i would go what? <laughs> you know what and she couldn't understand there was nobody there and i couldn't understand why she was asking the question you know so yeah. that that kind of stuff ha happened but um i didn't really at the time as a lot of people say it was something that was just there um when i was um my mum would shout and say food is on the table i would come down the stairs and i wouldn't eat and my mum would look at me like, you know, what's the problem? And I would look to the chair beside me and she would be like, what? And then she would get a plate and a knife and fork and put it beside me. I would smile beside me and I would eat food. Now, I, I don't remember this stuff. This is what my mum yeah. just, just said. This is the crazy. This, yeah. is, this is how crazy you were. Yeah. Um, and then the, these, there's all these little scenarios and things happen. But the, I think the pinnacle moment for me was when my um, when I was around about 11 or 12. And I was in bed and it was a school day, so I'd obviously been sleeping. And I woke up um, just like maybe five minutes before 7.30. It was very, very like shoot up straight in your bed because I had just been having a conversation when I was sleeping with the next door neighbor. 
Now, the next door neighbor was, uh, and this is this is what the, the skeptic part of me, because I come from an atheist background. So the skeptic yeah. part of me straight away says, yeah, but if it's an old man next door who dies, then blah, blah. Yeah. But the thing is, this 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 was a 18 year old boy who was as fit as a fiddle, who did charity cycles, who went to the gym every other day. Um, he was our neighbor and he came in and actually he was babysitting for the evening. We went to bed. Um, and in, in this time, I, I just was speaking to him in my mind, even talking about it now, I just see it all coming back to me. I was talking to him in my sleep and he was talking away to me and said, well, just so you know, I'm fine, but I'm going to have to just go. And he just sort of, in my own vision, started to disappear. And for whatever unknown reason to this day, 11 year old, 12 year old, I knew that meant that he was no longer here, but I didn't yeah. know why I knew that. Yeah. So I sat up in the bed and literally 10, 20 seconds, it could have been whatever. I just heard this screech from next door where the parents had just found their 18 year old son had died. Oh, wow. And for me, I was sitting and obviously the last thing people want to hear is he's OK. You know, I just spoke to him. Everything's fine. It, it's yeah. not what people want to hear. So no, of course. Th that for me was a really big sort of um, pinnacle moment. And um, I think through school and, you know, things, uh, there was a really nice girl who used to sit with an art. And she said, John, you do know you're talking to yourself, don't you? And I was like, what? And I never even knew that I was having conversations out loud with my own self, which obviously for me wasn't with myself. And I just stopped from there. So I just shut everything down and I never did anything again. But this was 13, 14. But when I got to the age of 16, I started working full time. And um, with the job I had involved me going to people's houses and uh, companies and different things. And the many different scenarios. But I think one of the ones that really made me really think more was um, I had an appointment at nine o'clock in the morning and I was sitting in my van outside the house I was waiting to go into. And I had such a resistance to go to the door. But I had to go to the door, but I had such yeah. a resistance to go. And I finally went, OK, well, you know, nine o'clock, five past nine, I chapped the door. And this lady opened the door and she looked at me in a dressing gown and she said, um, can you come back another time? Because my husband died in a car accident this morning. Oh. And I just obviously, what do you do? What do you say? So I just yeah. I was like, mm. so I came back. Now, I had to go back to that house um, maybe two or three weeks later. And when I went to the house, women tried to apologize because of the appointment, obviously, which is just but the house was still full of flowers. And when I was talking to her, um, for some reason, I started having um, Disney characters out of nowhere. I, I didn't say anything, of course, but in my, I was like, why, why am I thinking of you know Disney characters? Sure. And then she started talking to me about her husband and she said, and you know, we had planned to go to Disney. Oh, wow. So I just had these tingles. And I, I, obviously, I don't understand that. I don't know what's going on. So that really became um, the point where we're talking 16, 17, 18, 19, um, having all these different scenarios and experiences and then deciding I'm either going completely loony or there's something else happening here. Yeah. So that's when I went to the specialist church to go and see, you know, what happened. So... Um, yeah, there's many of these little stories and it's not until you get to a certain point i mean looking back the way i suppose i would never many people say oh i've been a child i've been a medium all my life and it's like okay but i think once i understood mediumship and i understood the value of what it was and what happened i then can relate these stories back and go well in fact i probably was in that power of awareness from yeah. the very early days all the way through yeah yeah um, yeah I think you mentioned uh, my, before my grandmother. Um, so my grandmother's a very, um, very strong, uh, very strong medium. And uh, she was, it was actually really funny in the family because the family was always afraid that they would catch the bug. So, <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? So what, what used to happen was I have a sister. So what used to happen was the, uh, my dad and everything, they would they would keep my sister away from my grand, thinking that you know, the female always gets the bug. So they okay. thought if her away, she wouldn't get the bug. And obviously, I never caught a bug. But I was my grandmother never talked to me about mediumship. She didn't speak to me as a child about it. It was only when I got to 28, she actually spoke to me the first time. Um, but 
they were so disappointed that I got the bug and they were trying to make sure nobody got the bug and I ended up having the bug, you know? So it's, it's interesting how people think. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of, I mean, it's, uh, uh, actually, I must come back to Mrs. MB's question. Hi, Mrs. MB. She's asked, uh, what is your most spiritual experience? In, I don't know why in Scotland specifically, but she's asking in Scotland. Is this your, is this a relative, by the way, John? Yeah, I'm not paid, sure. This is my mum. I paid her to come. No. Oh, fantastic. Uh, no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> no. um, I think spiritual experience, um, I think probably a, a very bizarre experience, uh, um, which... And away kind of, um, it kind of shows the magnitude of what mediumship can do. Um, yeah. I, I had done a workshop uh, as a student. I was in a workshop in Glasgow. And I had met a friend from England and we went up to Calendar in Scotland. And um, there was, there was, um, there was a, a lake in Calendar and it's all the rocks. And it's like a, it's not sand. It's pre pretty much cobbles and rocks all the way through. And it runs yeah. water and it comes down a bit of a waterfall. Yeah. And we were there walking around and there was a, um, there was a family and there was a dad standing in the middle of all of these rocks. It's just like pebble dash everywhere, you know, just rocked pebbles, stones. You, you can't see anything for rocks. So he's walking around and you can see he's looking. And I said to my friend, like, I said, I wonder what he's, what he's looking for. So there was him and two children. And um, I went across and started speaking to him. And I said, you know, if you lost something, can we help you? <clears throat> and you wouldn't believe this. I, I don't even believe it happened, but this is what happened. I'm standing there with him and I'm happy I have a witness. So I'm standing there with him and I said to him, what is it? What is it you're looking for? And he said, well, we've driven up from England and we're here on holiday. Um, my son, my other son's in the car with my wife and my son has problems with his eyes so he's got really really special glasses the children have been running around all these rocks and everything and he's lost his glasses and I said well what what do they look like and he said well they're impossible to find because it's just pretty much glass with metal because it's a, a child so they're one of those ones you know you can bend and twist they don't yeah. break but it's just pretty much simple metal and I said okay I said well he said and we, we're going to have to choose it's very expensive glasses we're going to have to cancel the holiday and drive back to England because we, he can't play he can't play his games or anything he can't oh, see you know, so. Yeah. so I stood there with him and all of a sudden I just turned to the side and I started walking across all these rocks and stones and I put my hand down behind the rock I picked up on a back of course and I says it these ones wow and he looked to me I looked to him we looked to each other and he goes how did you do that and I said I've got no idea I gave him <laughs> the glasses and we walked away it was the most bizarre thing uh, ever. And as, as I said, if I never had somebody there to witness it happening, it would be very hard to try and convince myself or anybody else that it was yeah. real. But it, it, was, it was just one of those very, and for me, it sort of, it sort of shows you the, the no boundaries of mediumship. Yeah. You know, the, when you're talking about mediumship is about serving. We always, we always think it's about serving the dead. But in fact, mediumship's a bit, we serve the living very often yes. more than we serve the dead, you know, because it's the, yeah. it's the living that come for sittings. It's the living that come to demonstrations. It's the, the living that come for teaching, you know? So Absolutely. our mediumship is more on about living people. And if you can serve living people through your inspiration and your, your hopefully your compassion and your humbleness to, to what you yeah. do, there's, yeah. there's limitless possibilities. So I would yeah. say that was that was certainly an experience I would class as a spiritual experience. How far was you on your journey at that point? Not that we ever reach a destination. No, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I think maybe three or four years, maybe. OK, so still ish, yeah. early ish days. Yeah. Well, I was skeptical for the first four and a half years or so. I mean, I, even even when I went to um, the the church, the first time I went to the church and they asked me to do an exercise and I was, you know, I was, um, it was respectfully a really wonderful time because yeah. when I, when I started and I'm, I'm not that old, although sometimes some, you might, you might question, but when I went to the church, <laughs> I, I turned up at the door and it was such a nice experience because I was looking for a church to, to work out if I was going bonkers or not. Yeah. And I found this place in air and 
I drove up and down the street trying to find this church. The circle started at 7.30. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. So I thought, I'm going to just have to park and get out and walk. But it's certainly here. And the buildings were all like business buildings. So they all looked the same. And I, I just couldn't find it. So it was like three minutes to go. I drove down the road and this car pulled out. And I was like, the only space I could get in. Parked the car, looked around, and there was a the church sitting right there. <laughs> I think I went, oh, well, that was handy. So I go to the church and I open the door and I stand on the threshold of this church. And all of a sudden, this lady with purple rinse hair comes around the corner and she says, come in, son. Why don't you come in? And I'm still, you know, resistance. I'm thinking, oh, my God, what's this? Because when I was at the church, it was mostly older people, um, because today, obviously, we, we, we want more younger people involved. Yeah, but it was mostly younger people, uh, older people. So I didn't really want to be there. But something pulled me there, so I went. They did healing and stuff. Do you want healing, John? No, no, you're fine. I'm just going to sit and watch. <laughs> and then they did these exercises, and they said, well, why don't you do one? I'm going, ah, I'm just honestly, and I'm thinking, I just need to get out of here. You know, they're bonkers. I just need to leave. And then they, I get cornered by the, the, the you know, these, these ladies, and they said, why don't you just do something before you go? I was like, okay. So this, I had to have my back to the room. And they did, we did an exercise and the teacher was in front of me and everything I said was right. And the woman looked at me and she said, are you sure you haven't done this before, son? And I said, no, I'm guarantee I haven't done this before. I said, this is all, I'm making this up and, you know, this is imagination. You're just being kind because I'm here for the first time. And I went right down to the, the, the skeptic group. Um, and from that moment, that moment on, it made me curious enough to want to go and investigate. But even so, um, three four years it took me before i really started to say maybe there's something on something else here so it's a very um a very peculiar kind of development most people come in because they think and believe they are and i come in to prove i wasn't hi tracy she's just asked a great question but just following on for that you you've is, it, your story is very similar to mine in terms of my parents didn't really have any kind of belief system and so I, I kind of, I, I did doubt myself a lot and still do to this day. And there's a part of me that I have to work with constantly, a self doubt, a self judgment. Yeah. How do you manage that? But Tracy's asked, do you see spirit now or is it just in your mind? I.e., having vision as I have vision, but I just put it down to intuition or having good intuition, I guess. I don't know. So that's another faculty is you constantly questioning your experience how do you move beyond that john i think it's it's very much the um the process of going through the you know when you're walking through hell keep on walking scenario you know when you're when you're trying to express this you've you've really got to try and consider to give yourself the freedom to be wrong yeah to 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 try to give yourself the permission to express your experiences because the more you express what you you perceive and the more you get that feedback the more you're going to know if, if it's my own mind or if it's something else because we have to be honest in development and say well there's clairvoyance but there's also a clear imagination you know we can we can have something and all of a sudden our mind takes over because that's their mind's job that's what we've that's what we've got it for. That's his job. His job is to make stuff up. That's the whole point of it. So how do we know the difference? In the early days, for me, it was just be wrong, be wrong, be wrong, get it right, be wrong, be wrong, get it right. And just yeah. really try to trust that process. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty much the, the, it's the hard way to do it because nobody wants to be wrong. You know. So because we don't want to be wrong, we say nothing. But when we say nothing, we don't develop because we're not doing anything yeah so yeah. yeah um uh so tracy just come back with your question is it your mind or is it spirit um for me the the i suppose the next part would be through your development you would actually start to act I, I, personally i call it more about refining your awareness so we yeah. have an we have initial awareness, which um, yeah. could be superficial, but the more we develop ourselves, we refine the awareness of our own perception. And hopefully over refining it, we recognize the energy of our own mind and the energy of ourself is different than the energy of somebody else or from the spirit world. So yeah. 
that process of development, it's not necessarily, I mean, I, I never see the spirit world. I don't have, a, um, I've, I've never had the desire or a need to see the person. So I, the, it's not the way my, my mind is, is programmed for mediumship. I'm not busy trying to see the person because I'm not really sure how me seeing them is going to help me to talk about them. So for me, it's more of a, a, an awareness of experience rather than a, a, an actual visual of a person yeah yeah it does make you wonder the mechanism of clairvoyance mm. you know how much is it the mind and the and the, and the clairsentience that creates the image which yeah. is what i think what tracy is trying to say so that therefore you can become doubt doubtful and then as soon as doubt comes in that's the worst space to be yeah. in yeah. And, yeah. and it's managing that and trying to move through that i guess and i want to come back to your sensitivity john because i'm i am um i'm very aware that you're a very sensitive man i hope you don't mind me expressing that no, um right. in the early days though so you had this duality if you like of this self-doubt but you're a uber sensitive guy with with you know these experiences going on as you started to develop how did you manage your sensitivity um, I think I very quickly sort of recognized the importance of discipline. So that every time, if you, if you think about every time you take a step of development, you're enhancing your sensitivity. And every time you enhance your sensitivity, you've got to come back into balance with what you've just discovered. Okay. So I think I was very conscious of every step I was making and becoming more aware, whatever, in whatever way of this world or something else, I became more aware. I also sort of recognized I needed to be in control in a positive sense of awareness. So every yeah. step, it's like when you turn it up, you can't turn it back down again, you know? Yeah. So when you turn it up, you've got to also turn the discipline to match where you are so that you can live a normal life. I'm, I suppose, lucky in many ways that I've got no, it's because of my own skepticism, to be honest, because I've got no understanding of why random spirit people for example, would would sit in the car with me when I don't know when I don't even know who they are. They've got yeah. nobody to talk to. Um, I don't I don't have a belief system that says the spirit world is going to come and talk to you when you're at the hairdressers or that you're in the supermarket. Or for me, it, it doesn't make any common sense. Um, and respecting the people, and respecting other mediums, and respecting myself, it's it's this sort of common sense, but also this intelligence of the soul. And I'm not sure that randomly spontaneous experiences have an intelligence behind them because it's it's a sacred moment for me. It's a very sacred experience. It's not a it's not a trick. It's not an act. It's a sacredness. There's a sacredness within what we do, and I think yeah. sacredness has a place. You know, you wouldn't see the Pope getting out in the middle of uh, you know, the high street and start blessing people. You know, no, of course. But, I, I absolutely agree with that. And, and that's an area I wanted to touch on. For you, what is that sacredness of that communication? I think the for me, the sacredness is uh, uh, there's, a, there's a reverence about serving. And for me, when you serve truly within your, your love of people and love of what you are and what you do, then you can't help but be in compassion and be in, be in a love. And I think when you recognise the 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 power that i suppose the discipline and the, the the vulnerability it takes to be vulnerable to do the job we do it really starts to help you recognize and respect the reverence of what happens in the experience because we're, we're in a very vulnerable position aren't we when we do mediumship absolutely yeah there's no script there's no um you know there's no preconceived um you know this is going to happen you're going to have an hour to do this you don't have that possibility so you're you're very vulnerable and then your vulnerability you can you can try to be the medium and try to show people you can do it or you can be yourself and be vulnerable which is actually going to encourage the more natural expression of who you are because yeah. the, the the pretending to be something means you're not being you and if you're not being you you're not in contact with your natural self so it's going to interfere with the process in my opinion uh, absolutely and i'll come back to that i i Julie's put, do you see heaven? What what does it look like? I'm a, I think she says. So you don't naturally see heaven? Nope. I would have no idea. Um, to, to 
I've 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 had little experiences where I've had the feeling as if I've been in the spirit world. Yeah. Um it happened a few times to me, very fleeting moments. I can't say, you know, that I, I could explain it in any kind of level. I've had the feeling I've been in a sleep state, I've been taken, but that was again again very early doors. The feeling of being somewhere with somebody who was in the spirit world, but I've got no idea recollection of anything. So I'd be very, I find it very hard to to give any kind of honest answer to that question. Yeah, yeah, I I don't know a medium that's had that experience to be honest. That they've said they've been over, they've been able to see. I've had certain visions, but is that my mind? You know, yeah. if you don't, and if you don't question it, then you've got you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, hi Jane. Jane's, but hi. I hope you're well. I look. Uh, I, oh, I took a course. Oh, sorry, I took a course. It's my glasses. I'm so bad. <laughs> uh, and sometimes I could meditate and concentrate to connect. But no matter how much I try to relax, I don't connect more times than I connect. Does that? I'm not sure. What I, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I think meditation and connection. So yeah. For me, there's, this is again where uh, respectfully we've got to question the the, the understanding because. Yeah meditation is not necessarily about having a connection absolutely you know med meditations the, the the purpose personally the purpose for meditation is, is development is to be present is to be in the power it's to be whatever it needs to be for that discipline and to concentrate on having a connection is a different discipline so i wouldn't i wouldn't have them together uh you can move into relaxed state which might feel like a meditation and then you can move into awareness but then you're your actually intention is communication. Your intention is not meditation. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm going to come back to this quote as well that I found on online that you quoted. I'll come back to you in a sec, Jennifer. Um, when you awaken the self, you awaken the mediumship. Yeah. Can yeah, you explain me, a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. The 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 whole thing, and this is what I think is is the biggest challenge is that when you awaken yourself you awaken that power that lies within you because when you when you're when you, i think one of the struggles is that we're trying to make people into mediums and we're trying to encourage people to to enforce that medium ability but what we're not doing is we're not we're not looking at the person and if you awaken the person to the reality of who they are what they are the, the ability of mediumship will actually present itself. But we, we seem to approach it from let's do mediumship to get better rather than let's get better, then do mediumship. So for me, the, the awakening of the self awakens your mediumship because your mediumship has to come through every faculty that you are. So yeah. if, for example, um, I don't feel comfortable talking about love, well, how am I going to talk about love with other people? And how am I going to express a feeling of love when I'm not comfortable with love? So by awakening my own self to that presence and, and knowing my own self as much as it's possible, it allows me to actually invoke the naturalness of my perception that allows me to be the power that I am, which is again, bringing out the natural ability. So to know yourself is to know your mediumship and to awaken yourself is to awaken the medium. So I think it's hand in hand, but as I said, most of the times I think the emphasis is always on get a message, give information, do a contact, find this, what's happening. Yeah. And it is part of what we do, but I'm not sure the foundation is helping people really fulfill their own potentials. But there's a competition within that and, and there's a sense within um, certain people that they would or whether it's just a lack of understanding, they will develop the mechanism of mediumship, but not develop that natural that uh, expression, that sensitivity of self, and understand yeah. that. Now, yeah. as a um, a guy, I, I'll be honest, I struggle with the word love. Now, one thing I have to really work at is, you know, like today, I felt uh, a grandmother's love for for granddaughter, and it was beautiful. And and I often think. I really want to be able to express how do I express the love I'm feeling from her grandmother? How do I put that into words so she could possibly feel that presence? Hopefully you're always hoping that the presence is there, that she can feel her presence. But then how do I put that into words, John? That, and I know it's about my own self journey. Yeah. And I um, know. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, it's not an uncommon thing. 
I think one of the things about it is that we've got to again. This is this is what I mean by by taking our understanding to deeper levels of understanding yeah. when it comes to mediumship. Because if if I say to you, Paul, the power of mediumship is sometimes in the silence. Yeah. What does that say to you? To me, less is more. It builds the energy. So, yeah, but it also says that by you being in that power and that presence and being there, the energy and the feelings already there because you're just holding the space for it. Okay. Yeah, I see. So, the, this. so, the, so there's a there's a power in the silence, and we always think, and this is again, again, what what we sort of we grew up with this idea that the medium has to talk and talk and share and talk and share yeah. and talk and share. Now, yes, we have to give evidence. Yes, we need to give information. Yes, we have to try and clarify. But at the same time, there has to be an empathetic, energetic experience within the communication and not just how many facts can you give and how much information can you give. <laughs> so that that essence, that brings out your compassion. It brings out the reverence because you're actually working within the power of love. Now, what we find is, and I'm not saying by any means this is me perfectly, but what we find is that when we can give ourselves the permission to not just express information but express the love of the information yeah then people start to resonate with the simple fact of information yeah. where that we don't actually have to worry too much about how am i going to cloak this feeling in words the feeling we give and the expression we give has the feeling cloaked in the feeling of love so it, the, the person it lands within them by saying your dad your dad you know who always used to make cars he was a car mechanic oh yeah that's right and he was somebody who you know he was very good at his job you're 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 trying to bring it in within a love and compassion expression because we're yeah. but to be honest we're 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 so privileged yeah oh yeah to be the voice of the voiceless you know yeah. to to be the person that can that can tr um with, with all our might and all our abilities and insecurities and battles and all our fights with ourselves and how we can try to give ourselves the possibility to to allow an unseen untouchable can't see can't smell world to yeah. have a voice yeah you know that that for me and that's i think that's one of the things one of my teachers always said you know that he's a bit afraid that we're losing the magic Yes. Because it comes about information. We've lost the magic yes. of your, your dad's agree. here. Oh, my dad's here for the 14th time. Yeah. Wonderful. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, him again. Yeah. And, you know, and we, yeah. we don't sort of respect the process, not because people are being respectless, but more because it becomes so normal for us that we, we, we become immune in a sense to the magic of what happens. I was going to say, is that more of a societal thing in terms of how society is going and we become very flippant and everything is instant, it's on your telephone, you've got everything on your phone. So it does seem to be that. But then there's also this self-conscious, self-aware of what you're doing when you're standing on platform giving evidence. It's really easy to just to give the evidence to prove that they're there and and I've I've done it. I've been caught in that emotion and 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 going like a machine gun with the evidence. But actually, I'm not stopping to just hold that energy. That's yeah. really 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 true. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, when you, when you when you really and I said it's not going to happen every contact. It's not going to happen all the time. You know, we're 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 not robots. You know, we have a we have a desire. Um, and I, I love the psychology of mediumship. Um, I've done lots of things to do with psychology. Um, and I, I love the psychology of mediumship. And when we really look at, you know, what we what we set ourselves up for, and you know, we have this um, idea, for example, that uh, we, we when I was in development many years ago, I'm still in development today anyway. But when I was in development years ago, um, it was always, you know, you're only as good as your last contact. You're only as good as your last sitting. You're only as good as. Now, what happens is that we we end up what we do as mediums, we love to live in the past. Now, we're meant to be living in the present, but what we do as mediums, we live in the past because what we do is we we have a, a, a contact or a demonstration or maybe you, you give somebody a sitting today and it went really, really well. So you've now set yourself a benchmark what you did yeah. before. And if That's it didn't true. go really well, you go, oh my God, what am I going to do next? Because the last <laughs> one didn't work. <laughs> you recognize this, don't you? So what happens yeah. is we, we live in the past as mediums. 
And when you think about the if 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 the teaching says, well, you're only as good as your last contact. Yeah. How are you going to get back up for the next one when the one yeah. before didn't go so well? You know, so we've got to really think about mediumship for me is live TV. You know, yeah. it, it's it's going to be amazing. It's going to be average. It's going to be rubbish. You're going to work. It's not going to work. That's the reality of what we do. It yeah. doesn't mean that somebody sets out to fail or somebody doesn't try because how many people do you know, Paul, who goes on a platform or does a sitting and says, I hope it doesn't work today. Yeah. You know, when nobody sets themselves up not to be successful, but I think it's a lot to do with how we how we are in ourselves. And yeah, absolutely. The, the more we understand that, the more we can find our voice within the truth of who we are, which brings it back to ourself, that brings it back yeah. to the natural expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mediumship is a journey, isn't it? And it's a journey of a self. Yeah, it's a marathon. Um, yep. It, is and 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 manifesting mediumship for our own self-expression is is a really difficult thing because it takes time sorry jennifer i've been waffling i'm very aware um and she's asked a great question has there uh, was there ever a time spirit scared you john never uh very simply um again even coming from a skeptical background um i've been very fortunate uh, throughout my development to have the opportunity to sit in physical circles, trans circles, um, different aspects, different disciplines, uh, healing, trans healing, you know, so I've done a variety of different aspects and been privileged to be with some really good um, you know, people that do that kind of work. And in all the years of doing it, I've never once even considered why I should be scared. Because, again, my own philosophy and understanding where is the spirit world and what is it? Well, if it's a place of love, what's the reason I have to be scared of it? Yeah. Because what I'm actually saying is I'm, I'm afraid of love. I'm, going, I'm afraid of what love might do to me because I've, I've never had an idea why I should be afraid of love. So yeah. I've never been worried about the spirit world. I'm more worried about this world. You know, people here, you know, they, they can hurt you. They can talk about you. They can stab you in the back. They can try to ruin you. They can do all the wonderful things that, you know, humans love to do. But the spirit world, I mean, if it's a world of love, I, I don't really know what I need to be worried about. And I think right. that tension becomes your protection in a sense i don't i don't even believe in protection so yeah. um because i think your your intention of what you're creating becomes that that which you serve so jennifer i would say um i've never had any fears worries and i would um i would never I, i've never that no that would be just no can we dispel some old myths around protection for you yep. john what why don't we need to be protected um, well, as I said, the thing is, if we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting ourselves from love. That, for me, is, is kind of one of the main things. The other thing we have to maybe consider is that um, the world we live in, there's good people, there's bad people. Yep, that's the reality of where we are. Now, even people who are not nice people, they die. And when they die, they also go to the spirit world. Yeah. And when they get there, if they were to come back as an angel, and say, you know, it's me and I'm loving and caring. Nobody would recognize who they were. <laughs> no. So they've got to come back and go, look, I wasn't the best person when I was here and I didn't treat people good and I should be sorry and I should be. So they're going to come back with an energy that says I was not a nice person. Now, the untrained medium or the untrained mind won't know necessarily what to do with it and they will straight away stress and make it into something evil. The progression of the spirit world, if you look to the eternal progress of the human soul, mm -hmm. the soul progresses in the spirit world. So when we die, we obviously, the idea and understanding is concepts, ideas, philosophies, is that we die, we, we take our consciousness, and that's what we work off in the spirit world. Yeah. And in that awakening, we have the opportunity to go, oh, now I don't have a body, and now I don't have a mind, and now I can't hide. Now I recognize that yeah, maybe I shouldn't have been like that with Paul and maybe I shouldn't have done that. So that progression means that when they come to communicate, they're going to come and go, wasn't a nice person. You're going to know me for not a nice person because this is what you're going to know about me. But I'm also recognizing I need to apologize because I know that I wasn't treating you the way I should have done because I'm progressing in the spirit world. So for me, that, that sort of feeling of, um, yeah, there are bad people. Yes, bad people die. But even bad people have mums. 
Absolutely. They were all babies once. Exactly. And they, they have a uh, they have a right to come and commune just as anybody else. Yeah. Um so I think the the whole um evil thing is is more um the the the, the protection, sorry, is is more about what, what we're doing in here. Yeah. Than the reality of what it is. Um as I said, if if you do mediumship Paul regular and if I do this five, six times a week, every week, every month, and I've got course here, that and I do this and I'm doing circles and sitting we would be target number one don't you yeah. think oh the absolutely be going, there's paul doing it again yeah. let's go and get him. yeah let's go and teach it him. never happens exactly <laughs> yeah. so if it doesn't happen to us and you're doing it all the time yeah then is that because of our mindset or our belief or because we're special yeah. i'm going to go with our mindset and our belief is probably what, what why we save ourselves the problem perhaps yeah yeah well i'm sure there's lower intention lower energies etc cetera, etc cetera, but i do believe that, that you attract to who you are and if you're setting your intention as you said you're, you're going to intend to connect to the, the right level mj's put great question mj and good to see you on here can the loss of someone really close to you block or impair your ability to help people as a medium yeah it's a really nice question um mm. i think if i think personally if you have a a, a recent grief or recent loss I think yeah. that would be very sensible to step back and take time to 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 heal, to grieve, to go through your your own process. Because even if even if we believe in the spirit world, and even if we believe they're okay, we're, we're end of the day we're still human. Yes. You know, end of the day we're still sensitive, we're still emotional, we're still in pain, we're still in grief, and I don't think we can mask it with the 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 word of mediumship. So for me, I would always, you yeah. know, retract and take time to heal and to to, yeah. to be within that before i would actually go back into medium so that would be my personal personal opinion yeah 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 great question thanks mj uh i don't know if this is a great time to go for a break i know we are due on any second now um i've not heard nothing from richard so i'm hoping he's still there uh but i think it would be a good time if we can go for a break with yeah and uh, we'll be back guys uh, so don't go away. Our guest here, John Johnson, don't go too far. Go and put the kettle on and come straight back. And we'll see you in the next two minutes. Introducing the SPTV app, your digital spiritual guide for an enlightening journey like no other. Immerse yourself in a world of audio and visual content crafted to inspire, educate, and entertain. Seek guidance with our card of the day, choosing up to six cards for personal insights. Enhance your daily life with our wellness section, featuring nutritious recipes, affirmations, and balanced living tips. Explore our spiritualism section for a deep understanding of the religion, its principles, and spiritual answers. Unravel the secrets of the Clares and broaden your spiritual horizon. Easily find local readers, therapists, centers, or churches with our comprehensive directory. Stay connected with live broadcasts, check our schedule, and get to know our insightful presenters. Delve into the meanings of angel numbers, crystals, and a comprehensive list of divination meanings. All of this and more, available for free on the SPTV app. Download now at sptv.uk forward slash app and start your journey with your digital spiritual guide. Starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, join Adele and Laura as they host their show dedicated to wellness and positivity. The program will feature special guests and live interactive readings. Tomorrow night from 8 p.m., Join Clara for a night filled with mediumship teachings and readings, featuring special guests. And welcome back, everyone, here on SBTV. Uh, you're watching Spiritual Talk with my great guest, John Johnson. Hello and welcome back, John. Thank you um, very much. Nicholas asked a great question. Um, yeah, 
I'm just going to remind everyone before we go to that question, though. Don't forget tomorrow, guys. You probably saw the advert. Laura and Adele are on at 11.30. And don't forget also to down... Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I put 11.30. That's terrible. It's 11 o'clock, not 11.30. Um, and they're on tomorrow live. Also, guys, have you downloaded the SPTV app yet, which is available on Google Play? Also, um, don't forget to follow us on TikTok because we're planning to do a few lives on TikTok as well. So that's quite exciting. So look forward to that. Um, so, John, welcome back. I wanted to quick, quickly ask, uh, answer Nicola's question. Have you encountered any darker spirits? I did once when I was doing a healing session, and I think it may have been an attachment to a person. I worked with my angels to protect myself and the person's energy. I believe in the light, but as my experience is growing, there must be a dark. Um, well, the simple answer for me is no. Um, I haven't encountered any dark spirits. Um, and the, again, I think it's um, your, your way of working. If you're working with angels and protecting yourself and doing that, that's perfectly fine. You know, that's your thing. Um, for me personally, um, I'm not really sure what an attachment is. Because when I look at how the how I personally understand energy and how we, we recognize the energy of individuals and how the energy moves within worlds, then for me, um, an attachment feeling or expression from somebody, for me personally, would be something that possibly they've created themselves, which might sound a little bit controversial, but I'm sure Paul's going to pull me up on that um, I didn't say nothing <laughs> <laughs> this is your interview mate this yeah, is your yeah, interview. yeah but it's um but the, the, it's so to to protect my own self and the, the thing about it is and I, I try to say this in the most respectful sense I, I don't believe I'm powerful enough to to remove dark spirits or entities I, I don't think I'm, I'm I'm that powerful to be able to do that um, so for me, I'm, I'm always looking for the more common sense thing that makes sense to me. And when you talk to people yeah. in a way, they go, oh, yeah, that happened. And then it, it, everything just stops. So for me, there's a there's a psychological aspect to it. Can I can I just say that, John? I'm obviously uh, I am sensitive. I am aware of your energy. You are a, uh, you have a very high energy. You are a very sensitive man. You and I believe in scientific explanations to a lot of things. And I believe you resonate at a high frequency naturally. You can pay me later, it's okay. But you resonate at a high frequency. So therefore, I don't feel that lower energies connect with you. I'm not saying that there's um in my experience, I've had some unusual experiences in houses and hauntings and but some of that is that come from my programming from a fear based because <clears throat> i've i grew up in a background where my next door neighbor was a medium and she would talk about rescue circles and helping souls go over but then i'm of a belief system where i don't believe they actually need rescuing i believe there is someone for us whenever we go over yeah okay so so i think some of it can be programming but also it could be the person that you are so you don't have anything like that and i think your your original explanation or your um, your explanation about people do do they generally go over and suddenly become a good person can you imagine adolf hitler in the spirit world yeah you know guys i've made a few mistakes here you yeah. know he's got <laughs> is this guy doing hard labor or what yeah, yeah, did he yeah. where did he go is he in a lower vibration so it's a kind yeah. of a it's a really difficult question it's a very hard thing but i think also partly you create your own reality as you do yeah. in this world, you know so if you if you're a um if you're living a certain kind of lifestyle a certain kind of life in this world it would make sense that when you when you leave this world the expression you're not you're not going to have you know cars and houses and people and you know it, it's going to be an energetic experience in the spirit world so it's it's, it's the perception of the the the, the of so the reality of the mind if you like and yeah. if i'm living if i'm living a, a a life of luxury when i get to the spirit it would be very strange if it became a peasant you know if i was living as a peasant a very strange all of a sudden i was in a penthouse so yeah. I, I think it's also partly the the experience of the the reality of your own life and who you are and how you live is also yeah. partly to do with the reality of how you may experience the spirit on some level but as, again nobody has the answer yeah, and we don't actually yeah. know, but the the attachment and the I mean, you mentioned haunted houses and things. I mean, I've been to quite a few of these things, and I've yet to find something that I find is a problem. 
um, there was a, a lady in Holland and she had contacted me when I, I used to live in Holland. And she had asked me, um, she said, she was quite a young girl, she had a, a little baby boy. And she said, um, can you come to the house? Because, you know, there's, there's this happening, this is bad. And when I'm in my bed, I'm pulling the cover at night. My son now comes into the bed, he's petrified. And all this kind of negativity. Yeah. Well, there was four or five, four mediums, I think it was, went to go and see her and told her, put the house for sale. We can't do it. It's too powerful. You know, we can't. Oh, wow. So she asked me to go and my skepticism and my own crazy head. So I say, yeah, of course, I'll come for a look. I'm desperate to find one, you know, because everybody keeps telling me they're there. So I go to the house. And when I'm in the house, um, I walk in the door and I said to her, um, I said, OK, so just tell me what's happening, what's going on. So she tells me what's happening. And then she said, um, I said to her, well, the first thing I want to say to you is your, your granddad doesn't like being called evil. And she said, what? And I said, your granddad doesn't like being called evil. I said, because when you were a child, your granddad had such a presence and energy. When he came in the room, you would cower because you never knew what kind of mood he was going to be in. She said, yeah, that's right. And I said, well, your granddad's here and you're cowering because that's how you know the memory of reaction to your dad, your granddad's relationship. Yeah. Now, the reason your granddad's here is because you're having problems with your son yeah. and you're having to go to the hospital. Yeah. I said, your granddad's yeah. here because he loves you and he's trying to help you. But the the mis the misconception about the energy absolutely. was absolutely absolutely. Do you find though in in that I I get asked to go to a lot of places and there was one recently where again it was a grandfather, but they said oh there's this horrible noise of a dragging noise. Granddad had a stick and he had a dodgy leg and he used to drag and he was so happy to be around uh, and he had a message for the daughter and once the message went. They had all this experience about him saying goodbye and going. So they were so happy. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of these experiences do seem to be loved ones. Yeah, I think, I mean, as I said, there may be like, um, there may be a random case of, you know, somebody who used to live in the house is there because that was their house, you know. But yeah. most of the time, there still has to be a body of evidence that proves who the person is. I had another one that was a farmhouse and I was talking to them and they didn't understand anything I was saying. And then the the the, the granddad came into the house and he was skeptical as me. And I start we started explaining to him and he said, Oh yeah, that was the guy that used to live here. So he knew the man, and exactly. funny enough, he turned up and he could verify the man and then everything stopped. There was no problem yeah. anymore. You know, so yeah. for me there's that level of intelligence that I think we um, we sometimes underestimate or we forget. <laughs> But that um, come it's got to be down to fear and good old Hollywood. Yeah, I think so. TV dramatics, you know, we yeah. like about a drama. Yeah, um, absolutely. We all love a yeah. bit of fear as well because oh, it, it makes us part of the human experience, John, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. We got a great. Uh, hi, Tim. Tim's going to be coming on our show soon, so I'm looking well, forward nice to, to that. See you, Tim. Hope you're well. And and Tim's asked. I have never taught or encouraged students to ask for protection. I believe a minute a student asks for protection, they are fearful of something that will limit their leadership um and how do you feel about mediums and humans asking for protection oh uh tim nice you're here um and uh, we're rocking a week not long ago so it's nice uh, to see you i did um, see the pictures i was on, yeah, yeah, on the college yeah, yeah. um so I, I again i think for me the mediums and humans asking for protection I, again i, I think yeah. it's a, a lack of perhaps respectfully, a lack of understanding about what we're actually yeah. involved in. And it, it takes me back to what I said earlier. I think you were trying to protect yourself from love. So, but it, it's all concepts as well. What yeah. about the power of prayer, though? Yeah, the power of prayer for me is, again, I, I, you can go through the power of affirmation. You can go through yeah. many different things. And prayer for me is it's, you're creating a mental, emotional condition in order to do something so yeah i mean coming again from an atheist point of view i would always say i had no belief in anything i wouldn't pray now the interesting yeah. thing is when i've spoke about this and i've done talks on you know the, the the belief system and prayer and things i've often said when you were a child if you were a skeptic or didn't believe how many times were you thinking something like oh my god i hope this doesn't oh my god i hope this works that in its essence is a prayer because you're not sitting with your hands like this on the edge of a bed as soon as you start to struggle in life almost every human will cry out to something within them and say oh god i really hope this doesn't happen or yeah god if there's something there can you help me you know so we we, yeah. we have this calling that we all naturally end up going to 
yeah. that we don't necessarily we wouldn't class ourselves as religious yeah yet there's something within us that whenever there's a problem we have a calling within us that calls out to something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. so I, I think prayer is a is a kind of is an extension of that of a, of a, a real feeling of um you know what is it we want to create um and i, I think one of the things about obviously prayer asking for a specific thing um and the answer is no normally you know <laughs> can i have that no so yeah it, it's yeah. Uh, i think it's a it's an important part of mediumship development um i think it's something which i always try to encourage the understanding of the 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 philosophy and the what the prayer means and, and what it is for our own soul and ourself because i think when you're really trying to spiritualize yourself i think you've got to ask yourself those questions um and you've got to really have a, a an honest reflection of who you are where you are because the thing the thing about this world is that the world will always try to remind you of who you were yeah. rather than accepting who you've became yeah yeah, because if you look at, it doesn't matter if it's colleagues, if it's friends from school or family or family you don't see very often, they always remember who you were and they never take the time to go, who are you now? You know, so if you've done things wrong or you haven't been perfect, which nobody is, then where's the spirituality in condemning, condo condoning somebody to what you think they were rather yeah. than actually taking the time to understand okay, this is what they were, but I wonder where are they now? So the, the world keeps trying to remind you of who you were. They won't allow you to accept who you are today. Yeah. Which I think yeah. is very sad. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hi, Bernie. Bernie's asked, what was your biggest challenge when you first started? Um, my scepticism, I think. My belief to believe that I could, that I that it was possible for me, that who, who me could I possibly? Mm. Um, and also having the, I suppose, the, the confidence to 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 share i mean for me like many people um i had to learn how to express i wasn't very good with emotion i was very good at you know mentally thinking and shutting down and keeping it to myself because that's you know <laughs> that's the nature of how we grew up a lot of us and yeah. i had i had to learn how to express myself and how to share and how to be vulnerable so for me i think that's probably been the hardest thing is is not necessarily the mediumship because again mediumship doesn't always work that's the nature of it but i think by being comfortable with you you find your voice and your mediumship eventually hopefully yeah. so i think the biggest challenge was was john pretty much i was i was the biggest challenge yeah and, and, and probably true for all of us in a way yeah i think if Thank we're honest yeah. i wanted to quickly touch on the psychic mechanism as well so i think that's an important aspect of mediumship and how do you recognize when we are going psychic more than mediumship and i think that especially for a lot of people that are self-developing when they i don't want to say drop out of the power because it has a power of its all of its own yeah but recognizing the difference between the psychic faculty and the mediumship um, well, I think, first of all, we've got to think about what happens in the process. Um, when you think about what does a psychic do? Yeah. Well, we're, we're actually allowing ourselves to be very close to ourselves to start with. And we're also, for me, uh, we, we have an expression that we say it's a two soul connection. So if I say it's a two soul connection, your soul has something that's trying to tell you and you don't listen. Yeah. So I, have, I have a voice inside of me or, or a soul within me that's going, come on, John, stop doing this to yourself. You should be doing this. Why are you doing that to yourself? And John doesn't listen. So John keeps banging his head off a wall, making these mistakes because he doesn't pay attention to what's happening within him. Yeah. So I come to you, Paul, and I say, okay, Paul, so let's see what's going on with you. So all in, in a simplistic sense is that I'm actually trying to pay attention to what your soul's trying to say, but you're not listening to it. So for me, I, I get the impression and I need to try to to not judge, analyze or assume. I need to try and have that feeling and, and let it come out of my mouth without trying to be the judge of what happens to try and give you back what you're not listening to. That would be for me the simplistic way of understanding the intuitive, the intuitive action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and from there, depending again on your development and how you're how you how you are as an individual 
and how you are taught to do this will also depend on you know what your steps will be to what you discover um are you uh, again we, we often talk about spiritual mediums and technical mediums and we try to say spiritual mediums are more powerful than technical mediums there's no difference it's more about what style do you work with that matches who you are some people focus purely on evidential stuff some people focus on very emotional stuff one's not better than the other it's an expression of who they are so when you're looking at the intuitive side what's the reason you're doing it what is it you're, what is it important that you feel is important to discover because if my my focus is because i want to find out how many cars you've got and what book you're reading and if you have a leaky tap if that's my intention then that's what i'm going to discover if my intention is to find you the person it's going to be a very different experience to to discover what's happening as you as an individual within that I call it like the, the private space within you as opposed to the superficial stuff that's hanging around you yeah. so by being able to go to the soul of the person and really try to to be far more um to be far more deeper with them it's also about the depth of yourself and if i can be deep within my own self and accept that i'm not perfect that i don't get it right that i can't do it all the time that i have insecurities that i don't always feel good enough that you know the list goes on and on i'm, I'm actually giving myself permission to embrace the reality of how i really am which means yeah. i'm going to embrace the reality of who you really are because i'm giving myself the permission not to put myself on a pedestal i'm giving myself the permission to recognize me and you are the same also in terms of that do you find you resonate to people that are of a very similar vibration to yourself in terms of experience and road to where you are today if that makes sense do you find that and, and i always believe everybody that comes to you for a reading there's something within them that's connected with you yeah i think that's level. i think that can be true the energetic draw you know the, there's there's um if you look to like if if we're at the college or we're doing a seminar and we have a day of sittings there's very often sometimes there's a theme within the sittings you know you you feel sometimes as if i've just said that to that person and there's something common with this person and the one after some similar you said there because there's a there's a theme if you watch demonstrations and you watch a medium demonstrate you'll also sometimes notice that sometimes the message they give to the audience or the individuals is also something which resonates with a lot of the people they communicate with so there may be five six contacts but very often the message they give to each person there's something in it that's similar to the ones they gave to the other five so there's a, an energetic thing that happens within the work so i think yeah. that's um we get that sort of attention um and it's almost as if as i said if the soul has an intelligence i find if i if i have the possibility to be with you and my soul says that guy is going to nail you and he's going to get you he's going to understand you then you get for some reason i don't know why i get drawn to you you know and you scare me but i get drawn to you anyway there's yeah. something about it and then yeah. hopefully you get what you need and not what you want yeah yeah absolutely debbie's asked a great question by the way uh do people's important status stay with them when they go to heaven i.e kings queens nuns etc what a great question yeah because we all want to know about the queen Absolutely. is she up there on the throne bless her well i'm sure you she's know. on i'm sure she is on a spiritual throne yeah um yeah i think when it comes to the the, the uh, obviously nobody knows until we get there um but for me i believe you know even the queen has to go to the toilet yeah. um when when we lose our when we lose our body we we are the essence of who we are so i don't yeah. think there's an important status um i, I think the, if the calling of the soul was to be the king or the queen or the nun that's the calling of this life and when this life is over yeah. then they continue the journey with whatever aspect is so I, I don't think there's a hierarchy when it comes to human evolution where you know the queen will be sitting now telling people how they need to run the spirit world <laughs> it's a great philosophy well maggie's already gone over maggie thatcher so that'll be quite interesting this could be a good conversation yeah, yeah we could i'm look here yeah so for those of you who know who maggie thatcher is of course um anyway that's i know we should be thinking about messages as well john we're going to try and do one each yeah. if if you're of a mind to do it um i know we kind of go into the the right, right brain when we're talking um but but it's been such a, a great evening and i'm so sorry guys if we 
haven't answered your questions but we're going to do one more if you don't mind john i want to yep. ask you what is it we're not talking about in mediumship what are the things that we should be thinking of whether um, it's personal development or just motivation i think we should be um stripping it back down to why we're doing it yeah because i think if we if we start to really try to understand what's what is the reason that we're all paying all this money and doing all these training courses and yes we're all we're all running about the country and the world trying to trying to become what what what's take it all back and say why why are we all doing it what's what is the thing that we're missing what is it we've forgotten yeah and really try to bring ourselves into that spiritual power that we can we can really try to reconnect with the, the spirituality of mediumship and not the performance of mediumship I think that would be really important to to try especially with new people i mean if you can you imagine students coming to workshops today and having to just meditate the whole day and listen to talks no yeah. chance you know no they, would, chance. They, would be, yeah. they would be at the door and they'd be chasing yeah. you so yeah. I, I think it's very much the the, the, the you mentioned earlier the way of the world i, I think it's it's like you know you know fast quick better and um it, it's it's i think we're losing the magic um not everybody but i think that the high percentage are losing the magic so i think it would be really nice to to just come back home for a while and really understand what it is we're all we're all actually trying to create yeah yeah and uh, but there, there is a calling though isn't there within us there is a part of us that has been called to this yeah i are... think so i i think it's i think it's partly it's very hard for many people, especially if you are, um, you know, you're low in confidence or you're, you don't want to, you know, big yourself up. It's very hard to say, oh, I'm called and it's me because I'm the chosen one, you know. But it's uh, I think it's it's partly to do with. When you when you really recognize the intelligence of your own soul and recognize the movement of what happens within life then there's a calling to serve the serving doesn't mean we all have to become mediums serving could be you're a nurse you're a doctor you are um you could be anything you know it doesn't have to be the medium but the calling to service i think is a very broad thing and it doesn't always mean a calling to service as a calling to mediumship you know we say i've, I've met many people and, and i say so what brought you here well i'm sensitive yeah. and i say okay yeah. well, go, go out in the world and find me somebody who's not yeah you know being sensitive isn't enough of a it's not enough of a drive and a belief and a focus that's going to help us bring the best out of ourselves just because we're yeah. sensitive you know so for me i think it's important to to break it down and come back to to the reality of the spirituality of what we actually have and what we do i think that would be really nice to do one thing i'm very aware of and i'm not sure whether i should we should rename you the skeptical medium yeah, probably but, <laughs> but you are you are uh, for me a kind of a case to prove that potentially maybe mediums are born into this rather than just developed and if so you are one of those natural mediums john i hope you don't mind me describing you as that i've, I've no idea um the as i said for me it's just it's it's purely my own philosophy of building up the the understanding that i have today is purely based on my own experience of my own development and really taking the time i mean i, I don't have any embarrassments about talking about my life or challenges um i've i've been in therapy for many years to deal with myself i, I don't have any embarrassment saying that i think we all should have therapy at some point you know so <laughs> I, I think that whole process allows me to to heal yeah. and by healing it actually allows the power that I am to become more present yeah and if I can be honest and humble and try to stay within my honesty of what I feel is important and not get distracted by the noise because the world is always telling you what you should do and yeah. everybody's always got a judgment on you and everybody's always trying to remind you of who you were and it, it's not spiritual you know but yeah. you have a you have right. a you have a you have a right to yourself to stay who you are and the hardest thing for us all the most stressful thing in the world is not being yourself 
Well, I feel very privileged to have you on social media tonight because I know you don't like going across social media. No, it's, and not. It's, <laughs> it's not a natural thing for you. And, and I appreciate your time tonight. We really do. If you don't mind, if you're of a mind to, we're going to do a couple or a message each. Or And guys, let us know uh, that you're there. Come and say hi. Don't forget to share this out because there's some great information from our interview tonight with John. We'd love to see your uh, old oh, Cameron's book. Does working with computers a lot diminish our ability? Well, yeah, we're going to say I'm going to say no. <laughs> I do a lot of Zoom, so. Um, but I think when it comes to computers, um, I don't think it diminishes the ability. You've, yeah. yeah, I think you've just you've got to try and have a different focus about how you're going to work than you would with, yeah. with a person in front of you. Um, yeah. And that's why, again, you've, you've got to just you've got to just give yourself the permission to to have a challenge rather than try yeah. to prove it. I yeah, think. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So how does this normally work? What, I mean, how do we know who's here and what's what? And so, so um, we are, everyone works differently on this. So um, I become uh, personally how I work. I become very aware who's with me, yeah. and I give the information. I don't always go to the person that I see. I mean, but other mediums do. So we have a lot of guys that work on here will go to the person they see. Yeah. So, so, um, so. Richard will flush up. We can see your faces coming up, guys. Your lovely faces on your profile pictures. We've got Katie. We've got Terry Louise. Hi, guys. We've got Bernie. So that's how it works. And then we kind of either feel the connection. Uh, personally, for me, they, they, I, I feel them come to me. And I was trusting the intelligence of spirit that it's, it's connecting in here. Okay. So are you going to... Do I don't know whether you me. wanted to go first or <laughs> so if you're really good and really good and blow me away, I'm just gonna just sit back and watch you work, John. <laughs> I should I'm really joking. I will, yeah. I will I will do one. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, let's just see what we can have here. Um I, because that because I don't I don't see the people, I'm just gonna yeah. um I'm gonna just give information. Hopefully somebody recognizes yeah. what we say. So yeah. uh, see what we can do for you here. So Okay, so um, so the first thing I want to talk about, I've got somebody here who I feel plays the guitar, and um, they would have played the guitar, and I feel as if they also, there's a good chance they would have been in a band, um, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to just to ask if somebody, somebody here understand this information, I'm just going to keep it short, let's see if somebody responds on this first. So somebody who could play the guitar, who also I feel probably would have played in a band at some point. Does that resonate with somebody? Okay, no so there's about so guys that didn't hear Richard, there's about a 15 second delay on the system. I could try and squeeze in one of my bad jokes, but I won't. Tell me honestly, Go they're on, really bad. It. No, do they're it. really bad. They're really bad. Uh, no bad one's thing? commented on my scar. I had an argument tonight with the uh, kitchen. Couldn't help it. Couldn't help it. I can't. I can't have people thinking I've got a hair out of place. Yes. So Karen. Yes. So yeah, Karen's put yes with me. Okay. So your dad played the car. Okay. And, so and Terry. Here. So yeah. Okay. So uh, and so I know the ones talk about playing the guitar, and I know ones to talk about being in a band at some point. Should have played in a band. It may not be in a big, you know, massive thing, but I know there's a band here with it. And also, there should be some sort of connection with the name of James or, or Jimmy James that should relate to this man or somebody that would be very close around them. Does somebody understand this as well? Okay. Um, awesome. And I also uh, feel here as if um, this, 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 this man, it does feel more fatherly towards... Um, it, it does feel more fatherly when I when I talk about it. It might not be directly dad. It might be father like somebody who was like a father to you. But I just know there's something here to do with uh, playing in a band, playing this. And I want to talk about very lively music. We're not passive aggressive. We're not passive aggressive. We're not passively playing the guitar. You know, we're really having our. I don't know if it's rock or it's something. But I know there's there's a real feeling here to do with you know pumping this out. It's not it's not just we're not just tinkle strings here. And um, who's this? Oh, it's Jay. How are we, Jay? Um, so you understand the James, you understand also, you know, we're, we're not, I'm not saying heavy metal, but I know there's definitely this feeling of, um, you know, really working the music. It feels very important that I've got a, 
a lively band here, not a, as I said, passive kind of a thing. Now, there should also be, if you understand this, there should also be um, some kind of recordings that are in the family. So something's been recorded about this person playing the guitar that somebody here, that whoever belongs to this gentleman, should still have recordings. Now, that could be old style tapes or um cds or something um but I, I feel there should be something that should be recorded that you can you could have maybe it doesn't work now but you could have went back and listened to it so this should also make sense for whoever understands this um i know here also that um if it's your dad um so can you have the recordings that's good um i, I do feel that he was somebody who um, I have to say I really like him. He's he's, he's definitely a gentleman that you could um, you could you could commune with, you could talk with, you could share with. Because I do feel that there's this sort of loving compassion. I know he really loves you and really cares about it. And um, I also feel that um, it was very hard at the end of your dad's life because I do feel there's there's many challenges here with him. And um, I also feel that it's not like, I don't really feel your dad wants to talk about how he dies, but it's more about the gratitude and the thank you for how he was cared for before he died. Because I, I just feel here as if there's a lot of emotion with dad um, and it feels very much as if he feels very touched and humbled that he was loved as much as he was. And I really feel as if he wants to just give this gratitude and this thank you for the care and compassion he was given before you went to the spirit world. Now, um, I think there's a few people understanding it. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so okay, okay. So there's two or three people there. Now let's just see if we can get it. Get you um, now. If it's correct, you also have to remember that or there should also be still a guitar in the family. So I don't know if it's your actual dad's guitar but i know there should be a guitar that he would have touched or played that should still be present in the family so some of you should know where that is if you don't have it personally and i also feel here that whoever has this or knows about it i know that at moments it has been used by somebody else it has been played or used by somebody else and um and also i have the feeling well this is interesting um would you would you we also also be able to place that at his funeral service there was something about his music played or something about it doesn't it feels like there's something very personalized about the funeral um and about something about either he played or his band played or music that he liked or something that he represented it feels as if it was used in his funeral service that hopefully should should bring it down to one person i hope um yeah there's a uh, terry louise could take it all okay um and i think karen karen is taking bits and pieces of this as well okay so the one that understands all of it would be really helpful if we can um if we can um but i said i just know that this um if it is your dad it feels very fatherly as i said if it's not your dad but it's very there's this love that i have for you but um i, I know also that with him he feels a little bit um for all the for all the 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 claims and the music and things I, I do feel there's also a part of him where he he never always perhaps expressed how much he loved you i know that it would have been maybe said or shared on the level but I, I feel as if there's almost this feeling of i should have said it more i should have said it so many more times to you because you're it feels to me as if you know you're, you're the apple of my eye that's that's the feeling i have I feel as if I want to just run in there and give you a big hug because I just I just love and adore you, and I know that um, I know here your 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 dad feels to me as if he's also encouraging um, where you are in your life just now because I, I know there's been challenges here. I'm not going to be personal, so don't don't worry. But I know there's been challenges here personally with where you are in life and what's happening with you, and it's almost as if I feel as if dad wants to encourage you to just you know find find the way to to find joy in moments to help you deal with what's happening with where you are in life so rather than sitting and getting stuck try to find ways to 
to move yourself and do something that keeps you keeps you actively because it will help you clear your mind for what it is you need to make choices about and i do feel these choices involve your your work um so i do feel your your dad is it's almost as if you you have a work that you want to you want to or a hobby you want to make into a work but it feels as if there's some choices having to be made and it's 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 there and i know that it's this this encouragement to know follow your heart do the, do the thing that's really right for you because i do feel that whatever you do you know your 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 dad's almost reminiscing you i've got a feeling here he just wants to start strumming the guitar and and singing and playing a song to you because that's that's this love and compassion i have with you so um i hope it's understandable for you i hope you can make some sense of what i said and um, and thank you for your uh, your efforts to communicate and acknowledge this oh beautiful thank you john that was beautiful um I'm just going to wait and see the last message. I've been, yes, I'm struggling, but trying very hard to. Karen said, awesome. I'm not sure if it was, and and yeah, both Terry and Karen could take that. Yes, big challenges personally. Uh, but do you get that, um, a message within a message sometimes, John? Do you find that? Um, yeah, well, this is the thing, again, when I when I think about the, the, the intelligence and mediumship, I don't think there's any one way. And I think everything possible when you pay attention to the movement of what happens within the expression, the expression sometimes will knock into other expressions. So I, I think there's a there's a there's a greater intelligence at work than sometimes we um, we give credit for. So um, thank you so much for that. I've got I think we've got time, for Richard, for one more. Okay, awesome. So guys, I. I've got mum here. I know she was mum. Uh, I know she was a grandmother, but she wants to connect with, uh, uh, I believe, a son and uh, a daughter. Um, but she's making me very much aware as mum comes in. I'm very much aware that she went into spirit with cancer, but I know there was other issues with mum. OK, I'm also very much aware that there was, forgive me for bringing this up as evidence, but there was a lot of blood from mum and, and there was a lot of in and out of hospital and I believe it's through the lungs as well with the blood but I know um it sounds awful isn't it but it wasn't how she went into spirit but she had this condition as well um I'm just gonna see who can take this mum but I also know that someone here has been building up the crystals and getting into the spirituality and and the psychic nature and and training and developing because mum is talking about that very much so okay does anyone understand this mum nothing yet mum had cancer she's also which is really quite interesting john she's also there's a memory here of the children watching the chipmunks now that's going back i think to the 80s i think or even the 70s well i don't know i was i, was, I don't think i was born then <sighs> Good one. Good one. I walked straight into that, didn't I? <laughs> I'm also getting the date, I believe is a birthday, around 1947. Uh, Lou's put mother-in-law. Okay, I'm just going to go straight into this, Lou. I'm also aware that, that if this is you, Lou, you've been looking for crystals, and I'm trying not to get in my head with this, uh, but there's lots of... Um, intervention that she's talking about from the nhs and lots and lots of help with her and as i feel i feel like i am connecting to you here lou do you understand all the information that i've given straight away because uh, my mum had cancer and respiratory issues okay 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 i know that with mum she's making me aware of her body she wasn't happy with her body towards the end in terms of putting a little bit of weight on but then i know she lost a lot of weight with the cancer as well and this up uh, this with her body there was a lot of limitation she's also talking about the white carnations as well and different carnations i and there was also and why she's giving me lots of medical stuff i'm not sure hopefully this will help us to connect she's also talking about okay i'm just gonna keep going then there was also slight heart murmur or slight the other thing is i'm very much aware of someone doing weight training i'm also um very much aware of the gentleman's name is john i i actually feel like i'm with 
Lou on this. Lost weight, yes. Um, I also feel the name Jean as well as John connects to the family. John, uh, John I believe, connects to her. Um, okay. Okay, but there's some talk about you looking for crystals, but eventually you'll end up with a cabinet full of crystals. You're attracted to the crystals, and so are children around you. Would you understand this? Because, Mum, this feels like, Mum, um, a, a, a lady that would have been very close to you, Lou, if you understand this. I'm just going to pause for a minute. I actually believe I I know mum uh, yeah mum can take this okay I'm just gonna hold this energy because I feel I'm connecting to Lou with this mum John and Jean Jean's really important okay with this connection as well you'd also understand Michael she's given me the name Michael and she's trying to help me with different names and she's also given me the birthday of 1947. 1947 i also know there's talk about within the family a holiday coming soon i know but somebody around you that's not happy about flying is very nervous and anxious about flying because there's some laughter about this there's also it can i know dad's spirit side as well i know her partner would have been spirit side as well Louis just keeps putting definitely there's a real uh, strong message as well and it comes in with the white carnations do you understand the white carnations that that this lady's given me and i know she okay just before her passing there was somebody around her my brother is michael okay helen i don't feel that with you helen i'm not sure but but she's talking about the carnations and someone was bringing her in carnations once a week somebody was bringing in flowers from her i know she had the support of friends before she passed into the spirit world okay lou saying yes to this i'm also very much aware of a son i'm also very much aware of medical conditions with son i also it's coming in so strong as i feel this that I really want to be around son and supporting son through his needs at this moment because I feel mum didn't quite understand the needs of son. There was a, there was an issue. Why am I getting all these medical issues? There's a lot going on here. They're going to call me the medical medium soon. <laughs> but there's a lot of medium. Uh, sorry, a lot of I'm feeling a lot of health issues within the family. I hope you can understand that. I'm sure about the carnations. These are, there, were, there was a lot of flowers. Um, also, there's like some kind of game that's very similar to the chipmunks, she's telling me, that the children are playing. Do you understand this connection to chipmunks? And they're foraging, and they're bringing things back to a base. Um, and she's very much talking about that as well. She's been watching the children, looking over the children. Um okay ah right right i'm gonna take the heart issues back i'm so sorry i gave the heart issues i'm very much aware of the gentleman that john had the heart issues because i'm also being shown the british heart foundation and the connection to the heart issues with john okay i'm gonna leave all their love i also feel this is the first time properly that that she's been here i do believe she hasn't been over very long and I'm really being quite insistent. I really feel that I'm connecting the Zelda game. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I've got to be honest. And it sounds quite interesting. But it's about foraging and bringing things back to base. And she's making me aware it, it, that she's watching. Also, um, you'd understand there's a gentleman in the spirit world that loves playing golf because he's also coming in that connects alongside mum. Okay, very much would be on the golf course, loved his golf, didn't have much of an opportunity when he was here, but I'm being shown uh, he's off in some exotic golf course over the spirit side. If they have a golf course, it would be great, wouldn't it? So I'm going to leave. Uh, Mum had lung condition and dad had. Okay, okay. I'm going to leave their love with you. It's very much uh, um, a real strong bond between mother and daughter and son here. So I'm going to leave a year. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to leave their love with you. Thank you for working with me. Three hearts when you don't get the voice. Yeah. Do you find that, John? That connection is nice to have that. But we've got some exciting news, guys. We are changing things at SBTV. We are potentially, if I'm right in saying this, Richard, bringing people in via Zoom. 
if you want to come on Zoom. Although I would say at this time of night, make sure you're not in your slippers and dressing gown. Um, look, uh, it's okay. We don't mind. We've seen a lot of things on SPTV. So actually, it's a new thing, isn't it, for SPTV? I've just realized. But it'll be good to have you on. Oh, it has been done. Yeah, it has been done. Rich is just letting me know it has been done before. But anyway, we would just love your participation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Don't forget tomorrow at 11, we have Adele and 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 oh, Laura. Thank you. Honestly, it's my age, John. It's getting to me. <laughs> I want to say thank you. <laughs> yeah. I want to say thank you again to our guest, John Johnson. It's been absolutely brilliant. I had such a great night. Thank Thanks you so much. Having me on. And uh, good luck with all your other. Uh, Tim's coming, you said, so good luck with Kim. Yes, Tim's, Tim's coming in July, so that's exciting. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. And we're back in two weeks, guys. Don't miss it. We are here with another great guest, so look out for us. And don't forget to share. We love you to share our programs. And if you don't already follow, please click the follow or subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. That will be great. But for now, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you in two weeks' time.